Welcome to the introductory lecture on the drugs acting on the peripheral neurohumeral transmission. Before we are going to deal or discuss those drugs that act on the peripheral nervous system, such as the autonomic nervous system, let us first have a review and a short introduction of the nervous system. The nervous system is primarily divided into the central nervous system, or the CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS. We basically refer to the central nervous system as the body's master control unit. It is basically composed of the brain and the spinal cord. Of course, the brain functions to receive and process the information, initiate responses, memories, and generate thoughts and emotions. The spinal cord functions to conduct signals to and from the brain and controls the reflex activities. On the other hand, the peripheral nervous system is composed of neurons that are located outside the brain and the spinal cord, and these neurons can be either motor neuron or sensory neuron. For the motor uh, division of the peripheral nervous system, it is subdivided into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. When we say somatic nervous system, it is a part of the PNS that will control the voluntary movements of the body, while the autonomic nervous system is the part of the PNS that will control the involuntary responses of the body. This diagram shows the functional organization of our peripheral nervous system or PNS. The peripheral nervous system is subdivided into two divisions, the sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division is also known as the afferent division, while the motor division is also known as the efferent division. How do we differentiate the two? When we say efferent division, or rather efferent division, uh, this is comprised of neurons that carry signals away from the brain and spinal cord to the peripheral tissues, and that is through the motor nerves or motor neurons. When we say afferent division, these are composed of the neurons that carry signals from the peripheral tissues, of course, that is through the receptors that are found on the peripheral tissues, towards the central nervous system, and this is through the sensory nerves. As you can see you know, in the figure, the motor division of our peripheral nervous system is subdivided into the somatic and the autonomic nervous system, or the ANS. For the somatic nervous system, it sends a motor innervation to the skeletal muscles, while for the ANS, it sends a motor innervation towards the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the glands. This diagram shows the major subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. Again, the PNS is uh, subdivided into two. We have the afferent division and the efferent division. When we say afferent, that is sensory in nature. When we say efferent, that is motor uh, in nature. When we say afferent division, it comprises uh, neurons. It is composed of neurons that will uh, bring sensory information from the periphery towards the CNS. We have here our spinal cord and we have here the skin. The skin contains the receptors and in the presence of the external stimuli, the stimuli will be converted into sensory information and the sensory information will be transmitted to the spinal cord by way of the afferent neuron. So the direction of the uh, arrow here or the signal here is from the periphery towards the CNS. On the other hand, uh, we have also have the efferent division. Again, when we say efferent, that is motor in nature, and it has two subdivisions. We have the autonomic and the somatic. So what is the difference between the two? The autonomic efferent division will, it is composed of neurons that will convey information away from the CNS towards the effector organ. So in this case, the autonomic efferent division, its uh, neurons comes from the spinal cord. We have here the preganglionic neuron and the postganglionic neuron, and it will innervate uh, the, for example, the viscera. No. So it will uh, send signal no, from 
from the CNS towards the viscera. That is the autonomic efferent division. For the somatic efferent division, when we say somatic efferent division, it will ascend a motor neuron, not somatic motor neuron, towards the skeletal muscle. On the other hand, or, or on the, uh, in other words, it will enervate the skeletal muscle. So going back to our illustration, the motor division of the PNS, which is composed of the motor neurons, is subdivided into the autonomic and the somatic nervous system. Again, when we say somatic nervous system, of course, it will enervate the skeletal muscle and it will control the voluntary movements in the body. For the autonomic nervous system, it will uh, innervate, for example, uh, the viscera and it will control the involuntary responses in the body. So when we say involuntary responses or involuntary movements of the body, those are the responses in the body that is that the individual is not aware of. While for when we say voluntary movements in the body, these are the deliberate movements in the body. You have the control, you control that, you plan to do that particular movement. In this diagram, the autonomic nervous system is subdivided into the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. So when we say sympathetic division, that is, that mediates the fight or flight response. When we say parasympathetic division, that mediates the rest and digest response. So let's first have a review of the structure of the neuron. So when we say neuron, that is also known as a nerve cell, these are the fund fundamental unit of the brain and the nervous system. It is an electrically excitable cell that communicates with other cells. The neuron is an important component of the CNS and the PNS. The type of neuron that is found in the CNS are the interneurons. The type of neuron that are found in the PNS are the sensory neuron and the motor neurons. So the neuron is composed of three main parts. We have the dendrite, the cell body, and the axon. When we say dendrite, so these are the dendrites. The main function of the dendrite is to receive signals. And where do these signals come from? These signals come from the axons of other neurons via synapses, sensory epithelial cells, and the environment. The second part of a neuron is the cell body. So the other name of the cell body is the soma or the pericardion. The soma or the pericardion contains the nucleus. The third part of the neuron is the axon. It is a cylindrical process. The main function of the axon is to conduct nerve impulses away from the cell body no, towards the target cells or the effector organ. Uh, usually, there is only one axon present. So in this diagram, we, all, we only have one axon present. And uh, the axon can either be myelinated or unmyelinated. In this case, it is uh, myelinated. So we have here the myelin sheath. The main function of the myelin sheath is to, for insulation, uh, produced by specialized no, glial cells called Schwann cells. We also have here no, the nodes of Ranvier. These are gaps between myelin coverings that facilitate rapid impulse conduction. Within the axon, the terminal part of the axon is known as the axon terminal. It is also known as the nerve ending. It is the end of the axon and several branches terminate in the synaptic end bulb. So it communi uh, communication with the target cells, it, it communicates you know, with the target cells via synapses. So those are the three you know, major parts of the neuron, the dendrites, the cell body, and the axon. So let's now proceed to the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is a part of the PNS that will innervate exclusively the skeletal muscle and controls motor functions of the body. When we say innervate, that, is, that means that the nerve is connected to a certain region of the effector. In the somatic nervous system, it is the skeletal muscle that serves as the effector organ. So 
again, um, it will innervate the skeletal muscle. And when we say skeletal muscle, it has to do with the voluntary movements of the body. So when we say voluntary movements of the body, that is a deliberate movement, meaning that you have the will and you, you have the will, you are conscious to do it. You have that it's a deliberate motion, meaning that you decide to do it and you plan to do it beforehand. So in this diagram, we have here our C and S, the, the spinal cord, and we have here the skeletal muscle. So the somatic nervous system has one neuron or nerve whose cell body is located in the C and S. And its axon extends uninterrupted to the skeletal muscle, well, peripheral synapse, of course. So this is the spinal cord. We have here the cell body of the neuron, of the motor neuron. And this is the axon of the motor neuron. It terminates at the skeletal muscle through a synapse. What do we mean by a synapse or synapse? So when we say a synapse, this is a point, a gap, or a point of contact no, between the neuron where information is passed from one neuron to the other neuron or to an effector organ. So we have here, no, uh, we have here a gap. A small gap wherein uh, the neurotransmitter you know, coming from this neuron will be transmitted to the effector organ for it to move and for it to produce its particular action. So that is the property of the somatic nervous system. Uh, it has a single motor neuron that will be sent to the effector organ or the skeletal muscle. In this case, because the the junction or the connection is between a neuron and a muscle that connection is known as the neuromuscular junction or the nmj now it is a synaptic connection between the terminal end of the motor neuron and a skeletal muscle or a muscle now, in this case this is the skeletal muscle so again this is the spinal cord the the cell body of the neuron, the motor neuron arises from the spinal cord, particularly uh, from the gray matter of the spinal cord, and it will be sent no, from the ventral side. So this is the ventral side of the spinal cord. It will be sent out to the periphery, you not know, towards the skeletal muscle. And this is, of course, the axon. No, this is the axon. This is the terminal end of the axon or the axon terminal. This is a synapse. And this is the skeletal muscle. So the autonomic nervous system is a term that means self-rule or self-govern. The name implies that the visceral innervation operates involuntarily on its own, as of course contrasted to the voluntary control of the skeletal muscle. So when we say uh, involuntary movements of the body, of course, now the, the autonomic nervous system controls the involuntary movements of the body. Example of this is digestion. So for example, after a meal, after, uh, after a meal, the body tends to digest the food that we have taken in. So you do not decide, you do not plan to do digestion. That is already automatic nature of the body. So that is an involuntary movement. Another is the heart rate. You do not plan to, uh, to induce the contraction of the heart that is already an automatic or autom automatic function of the body. Of course, you can still uh, initiate or inhibit some visceral activities, for example, you know, the urination and defecation, but primarily these are involuntary in nature. So the autonomic nervous system will innervate the smooth muscles, the cardiac muscles, and some glands. When we say cardiac muscles, now this is a muscle of the heart. When we say smooth muscles, this refers to the muscles that are found in the blood vessels. In most of the GIP, in the bladder, and in other hollow structures in the viscera. When we say glands, that could either be glands that are found in the viscera, and we also have the non-visceral glands, such as the salivary gland and the lacrimal gland. So the autonomic nervous system, it differs from the somatic nervous system because it has two peripheral nerves that is involved in the transmission process. So it is basically a two-neuron system, unlike the somatic nervous system, which is only composed of one, no, one neuron. So the 
autonomic nervous system has two neurons. The first neuron is the the first is called the preganglionic neuron and the second is the postganglionic neuron. So yung preganglionic neuron, it arises from the CNS, particularly in the spinal cord. Its cell body arises from the spinal cord and it terminates at a ganglion. When we say ganglion or ganglia, these are group of neurons or cell bodies outside the CNS or in the PNS. So as you can see here, uh, there is an interruption in the neuron no? because uh, we have here a synapse and we have here the cell body of the another uh, neuron and this is called a ganglion. So this is a group you know, of cell bodies that is located outside the central nervous system. So as you can see here, the, the axon of our preganglionic neuron. So this is the axon, or rather this is the cell body of the preganglionic neuron, and we have here the axon of the preganglionic neuron. It terminates at a synapse here. And this, this uh, axon of the preganglionic neuron will innervate another neuron. And this neuron is known as the postganglionic neuron. So the cell body of the postganglionic neuron is located at a ganglion, this part here. And it terminates at the effector organ. So in this diagram, the effector organ is the cardiac muscle, the smooth muscle, and the glands. So that is the main difference you know, between the autonomic and the somatic nervous system in terms of its neuron system. So yung somatic, it is a one neuron system. Yung autonomic, it is generally a two neuron system. We have the preganglionic and the postganglionic neuron. So yung preganglionic, no, it arises from the spinal cord and it terminates at the ganglion. Yung postganglionic naman, it arises from the ganglion and it terminates at the effector organ. So these synapses here, we have here one synapse here and the other synapse here. These are chemically mediated because it involves the presence of the neurotransmitters that will be able to send signal coming from this neuron towards the other neuron. And the signals will be transmitted from this part here of the neuron towards the effector organ, again by way of neurotransmitters. The peripheral autonomic nervous system has two subdivisions that originate in the central nervous system and one that does not. So these two subdivisions are referred to as the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. The other one is the enteric division. So the autonomic nervous system is uh, mainly subdivided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. This two here arises from the CNS, so it, they could either arise from the brain or the spinal cord. And the other major division is the enteric non nervous system that, is, uh, that controls the GIT behavior independently of the CNS.